Okay, so I'll start with the quiz question. <clears throat> There's only one question that I asked you in the quiz. And I told you because of that, I usually make the question uh, something that is not trivial, something that uh, you have to kind of think. As I said, also, the question would be not outside of what I taught. So the question was what? What was the question? The question was to find out which one was a correct positive phrase, right? So I give you four phrases and one of them was the correct uh, idafa, positive phrase, right? So I'll just write all four of them one by one and then, and then we'll see what's the problem and which one was the right answer. One of the option was by two ar raju ar raju la. So is it a correct positive phrase? Is it correct idafa? Okay, it is not an idafa. What's the problem? Where is the problem? I and D looks like you know I plus D is equal to idafa. What's the problem? Okay, so yes, the problem is here. The second word, the first word checks out. No alif lam, no tanwin. Excellent. Second word is the only rule we have in the second wo word. The strong rule is that it needs to be in the majrur kasra. So this one is not good. So no, this is not an idafa. Correct idafa. Excellent. And the second option was Allahu Ghafur. Okay, so now you complained about that second one needs to be kasra. So it looks like I do have a kasra here. Okay, so, so we have a dhamma note and win and everything. So is it a karik idafa? So it's not karik idafa. Why? Also from the meaning perspective, you know, this one doesn't make any sense. And another way of looking at it, which would be easier that, you know, we have alif lam. You can think of alif lam or you can think of definite. You can think of uh, definite, and then we have a definite. It's not something that we learned, right? You can feel that something is wrong here, either by the meaning or by the way you understand so far. Yes, this is not an ilafa. Jayid, uh, the next one is what? Next one is al we have al al bintu al jamilatu. Now this one kind of looks similar because we've been studying about this kind of phrases for a long time. Huh? <clears throat> it, is, uh, it is some kind of phrase for sure, but uh, it is not idafa phrase, right? It is your adjective phrase, yes. So, you know, don't get confused with those. Yes, it is definitely a good phrase, but it's not idafa, it is adjective. Okay, so that is your not idafa. And then the last one, what we have is what? We have by to waladin. Now this one is also looks weird because looks like we have indefinite, we have indefinite. Hmm. Something that we know indefinite, indefinite is adjective, right? That's how we think, you know, because we know the idafa is I plus D, something that, uh, you know, we're trying to make it our life easier. So something is wrong. Initially, you don't want to accept this one as idafa, but now we have two problems. The other ones, we kind of, we are kind of sure that they are not idafa. So, you know, this is one way of looking at it. But if you look at from the rules perspective, if you just look at every single rule that we know, then you will see everything checks out here. There is no alif lam here. Good, no alif lam. There is no tanwin, no tanwin, okay? And the second one we want what? To have, second one we want to have kasra, the majru. Well, this one has a kasra. In terms of rules, everything checks out. But only thing that is what's not checking out in our mind, because all this time, we always see the second one is definite. And we were kind of using this thing, I and D, from here, we are not feeling so comfortable. We are not too sure. So this is why I wanted to test you with this one, because remember, whether you're paying attention or not, I was mentioning, inshallah, this is something I'm going to be talking about today. I was mentioning a few times, most of the time it is definite. 
So this is something whether you're paying attention or not, I wanted to test. And also you have to know which are the strong rules. Only these three are the strong rule right now. Okay, so if you knew them, inshallah, I think most of you got it right anyway, then you would know that this is, yes, indeed a correct idafa phrase. But now, inshallah, I will talk about talk to you about uh, this kind of why it's not definite here, why we have I and I. All this time, I knew that I plus I is equal to adjective. Yes, but you. this is only from a visual perspective. And you always have to do what? You always have to verify uh, with the other rules, the grammar rules that we have, right? So here, as you can see, the adjective, if it was an adjective, what, what would have happened? It had to copy everything, right? And then also the meaning would not make sense. You know, the boy house, you know, doesn't make sense. Many different ways you will see it's not quite making sense. So, so what's going on? This is in fact an idafa. So the first question, what would that mean actually? If I say, baitu waladin, how would you translate? Yes, it would be a house of a boy. So the translation is a house of a boy. You understand? It is completely indefinite. Both of them are nakira. Both of them are indefinite. Both the house is indefinite and the boy is indefinite. <clears throat> so now you can understand why it is not that common because we who cares about a house of a boy? Nobody knows, you know, what house you're talking about. There's many boys, there's many houses, that's no that's no benefit, right? But sometimes these things come. So if we say the one that we know how to say is all we have seen is how we say baitul walad. Baitul walad. Here it would be all definite. The house of the boy. Okay. So you have only two options. Either you say everything indefinite. The house of the boy. Or you say everything indefinite, a house of a boy. Now, before you, because as a student, you always ask, what if this one, that, all these questions, how do you say the house of a boy or a house of the boy? You know, that is not part of the idafa. That's something we can use in different ways. Okay, so that's not the concern of the idafa. Idafa can only give you these two ways of saying it. Either you can say the house of the boy or you can say a house of a boy. Okay, so as you can see, this is more interesting. This is more makes sense. And that's how we'll be using it. But this something comes, uh, you know, for example, in English, if you want to say something like that, a house of a boy, how would you say you can use uh, indefinite idafa? This is called indefinite idafa. Main thing that I want you to know right now, I'm going to explain two things that this is also possible. possible. So idafa can have indefinite mudaf ilay. The second word can be indefinite. As long as you every other rule, the main strong rules, the strong rules are the three, right? You have the no alif lam and no tanwin in the first one, and the second one is always kasra. Then we, we have definitely built an idafa. So you understand? So this is number one that I want you to think. Number two is yes, which you know that this is not that interesting. It's not saying much, but when, uh, when do we use them is for different purpose. Because we can use idafa. Remember, I told you a few times that I will explain idafa. We can use for two purposes. One, for the position, like positive phrase, like uh, belonging, this one. Another way we use idafa is for making up a brand new word, like compound noun. For example, my favorite example is hot dog, you know, because in English, if you we have a hot dog, this is a word itself, but as soon as you break this word into two words, then we, we get into trouble. We have hot and dog doesn't make any sense. Are you eating a dog? What are you doing? See, the, by that, when you separate them, they don't make any sense. But when you combine them, that's when it makes sense. So this kind of compound noun, we also use idafa. Okay, so for example, if you say housework, housework. Again, this is a compound noun, right? We have a house, we have a work. They are not adjective, they're just compound noun. So in Arabic, they say shugul. Shugul, shugul is, you know, like work or being busy. Shugul is work also. And then bait. So 
you see, this is compound noun it, it, because this is a modern word. That's why they're just simply just, you know, translating the English to Arabic. These are, these are not, uh, you know, classical word. These are modern word. But how would you, they, how would they do it? They will use idafa. They will say shugulu baitin. Uh, another one is, for example, uh, driver license. Ruhsa, I'm just going to give you some example. Ruhsa. So that it's something that you were not studying, as I said, just so that the concept in your mind. So ruhsa to qiyada. So see, I don't want to say the driver license. I want to say a driver license. It's just a simple one noun. I should be able to say, how, you know, indefinite noun. How would we say it? If we put Alif Lam here, you know, you understand? So this is how it would be a driver license. Ruksatu Kiyada. See here, this indefinite uh, idafa makes a lot of sense when we have a compound now. You understand? So just keep that in mind and inshallah. Uh, and if you want to say the driver license, how would you say it? Ruksatu Kiyada is because Ruksa is license. See what they're doing? They're just making it and Kiyada is driving. So, you know, the driver license, that's how they, they make it. So how would you say the driver license? Where is your driver license? Or where is the driver license? You will just add Ali Flam here and you remove it. See, Ruksatu Qiyada. So that would be the driver license because you're looking at it as a one word. You're looking at it as a one word. So don't worry too much about this thing, but I also want main thing is that make sure you know the rules and make sure you also be aware of uh, being something being indefinite idafa. Make sense? You know, in our book, do we have indefinite idafa? I'm just going to quick check on this. Okay, here. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything here. But I know for sure in the Quran comes. I wanted to show you one example so it settles in your mind. Quran, it comes. Qawm. Okay. Qawm. What is Qawm? Hmm? What is Qawm? You have Qawmu Su'in. Yes. Qawm is people. I think, I think the nation would be much, much better translation. So when you say Qawmu Su'in, see, right now, if you didn't know, uh, you know, it doesn't look like any dafa. You don't have the definite and indefinite. All of these things not making sense. But what is important, what does make sense is that you see one dhamma. This is your first clue. You see one dhamma and you see a kasra. That's it, guys. If that's what's happening, you have to think about it. this is idafa. So now we have su. Su is what? Su, I think I gave you that word. Su is also important word is evil. Okay. So here, it would be a, a nation of evil, a nation of evil or evil nation. See, if you want to make it as a compound word, you can, you can say evil nation. If you say evil nation, then this is a compound noun. Uh, if you say nation of evil, then you know, you're saying it as, uh, as a positive phrase. But I think uh, the, the Quran context, probably, I'm not too sure, probably it's coming as a compound noun, evil nation. See you, what's happening? So then we can use idafa, indefinite idafa here. Make sense, guys? Is it clear? Okay, so, uh, so that's the only thing I wanted to explain to you, uh, idafa. So this way you are, your rules are set on your mind. You know what are the strong rules and what can fluctuate. So this is very important. So we are starting with our brand new topic, inshallah, today which would be, again, you know me, we always go back to that, that noun, subhanAllah. Now, by looking at all my, you know, scribbling here, it tells me how many times I came here. Now I have to use different color. So the noun, the four things about nouns, four attributes of noun, the gender we, we have covered, the definiteness, the definite and indefinite we have covered. And then alhamdulillah, last few weeks, we've been talking about grammar, going to put fatha, dhamma, and kasra, we have covered, we at least understand something about uh, this issue, right? And we said that now only thing left is the number. Okay, so inshallah, today we'll start about the number. And once we're done with that, inshallah, we will wrap up about uh, our basic introduction to the nouns. And then inshallah, we will start with the, with the verbs. Jayid. So what do we mean by numbers? 
Okay, numbers in Arabic is called adad. So number, what do we mean by number? Number is just like in English, you know, we have a singular and plural. In English, we have what? Singular and we have a plural. Simple concept of any language, we should be able to say something which is like singular and which is something is plural. We say one boy and two boys, three boys, four boys, okay? This is the whole concept. So how do we deal with them in Arabic language? That is the whole topic. So. Of course, in Arabic, we have a singular and we also have a plural, right? We have a singular and we have a plural. And most of the things that we've studied so far, maybe there might be one or two exception, we've been dealing with the singular nouns, okay? We were just dealing with singulars exclusively. And then inshallah today we'll learn about plural. And then in Arabic language, we also have a dual, okay? So the numbers in Arabic language actually uh, it's divided into three parts, three sets of numbers. The first one is singular, which is just one. You know, just like any, any language, we're talking about one item, one person, one being, just one. And the dual, it is very unique. It is exactly two. When in Arabic language, when you want to say two, it is not considered plural. It is considered dual. So we have this dual that only talks about uh, when we refer to two of anything, two items, two persons, two birds, two animals, doesn't matter, right? And then, so what about plural? Plural is anything, three or more. That's where your plural starts, okay? So that is the whole story about numbers. So we have singular, dual, and plural. So how do we say singular in Arabic? We say mufrad, we say mufrad, and the dual is muthanna. And the plural is jam'un. Okay, so these are good words, inshallah. You know, try to memorize them. Mufrad, muthanna, and jam'un. So today, uh, well, singular, we already know. There's nothing to talk about. We've been dealing with singular nouns all our lives. For example, waladun is a singular bintun singular and we have shajaratun singular these are all singular numbers most of the things that we have been dealing with are singular now so there's nothing to talk about so what i'll do is first i will will be start talking about this concept of dual and how do we deal with dual and then inshallah next time i'm not going to mention anything about plural right now because when we talk about the plural then i'll mention about how do we deal with the plural Okay, because the dual, honestly, a lot of people don't like it. And most of the books, they bring this concept of the, of the dual numbers at the later, later chapters. But honestly, I think this is one of the easiest thing in Arabic language. Maybe only thing is that because in English language, we don't have this concept. This is the only barrier. But in terms of how we construct and this whole, everything else, it is very easy. Okay, so inshallah, we'll start with the dual. So what do we mean by dual? Waladun means a boy or, you know, one boy, which is uh, one boy. The dual would be two boys. When we say two boys, this one belongs to the dual. It does not belong to the plural. Although in English, this is a plural. We want to say two uh, trees. This would be dual. That does not belong to the plural. So how do we say that? So this is, would be, inshallah, our topic. So the concept is very simple. The way we make a dual is we add an additional letters and we add ani. We have a singular. We add ani and it becomes a dual. How cool and how simple is that? Any singular word you have, you bring any sound at the end, you have a dual. Sounds extremely simple because it is. For example, we have waladun. And okay, fine, this is singular. We know a boy. And you're telling me, only thing I have to do is add any. Yes. And then it becomes dual. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. 
So now you, the first problem you're going to be having is you will be like, okay, so that doesn't sound too bad. So I have wala dun, uh, what? How do I pronounce this? Like, you know, you, you asked me to add ani. So let me write this a little bit better. So I had wala dun, I had ani. So what's going on? I don't even know how to pronounce this. So what's the solution? This is a very simple solution. Solution is that the tanwin is always, always at the end. This is one I'm, I'm going to explain in a very simple way. You know, it doesn't, you wouldn't have to have logic for everything, but I'm just giving you something. Tanwin is always at the end. As soon as you push this ani, is, is the dal is at the end? No. So the so tanwin becomes in the middle. So what do you do? Now, if I tell you that remove the tanwin, so what does it mean? It means just remove one of it. Tanwin means you have a double of fatha or double of kasa or double of dhamma. So that means I have to remove one of them. So what do I do? I have this one, right? Now I have wa, wala, dua. Now we have another problem. So who can, this is something that I have to ask you, inshallah, somebody can give me an answer. Who can explain how do we solve this problem? What, how, what is the solution to this problem? Exactly. Very nice. Thank you. Fata before Alif. If you have Alif, I told, explained to you this so many times. If you have Alif, you have no choice. You must put Fata before Alif. You understand? So now we have Waladani. What is Waladani means? It means exactly what we said. It means two boys. Now that you know, you know the thing. You don't have to go through all of this for you know every single noun. So you at least know what's going on. Now you look at any other noun. For example, we have been. Uh, we have uh, been tun, and we want to add ani. So what what happens? First, write the whole thing. Bin tani. You see, bin tani. Very simple, right? Uh, rajul. Rajulun. What happens? Raju Lani. Everything else is same. There's no exception, guys. There is no exception. So what happens with, for example, when you have Shajara? Shajara Tun. We add Alif and Nun. Nothing happens. Is everything same? Shaja, Shajara Tani. So only thing is that you have to see there's this tamar buta, it's changing it, changing it into your standard standard open ta. Why? This is another reason if you understand the tamar buta cannot come in the middle. Tamar buta is only at the end. So that's why now that, that this ta, it's not at the end, so it becomes your normal ta. That is the simple thing, only how you write it. But the pronunciation is same. Shajaratani. So you pronounce the ta. Make sense? So let me give you another one. So, okay, so give me two houses. Somebody write that with the proper sound. Two houses. And this is one, and I'll give you one more. Two verses. Okay, let's see. Baitani, yes. Exactly. Baitani, baitun, baitani. You just add alif and nun. Okay. Dani. So how do you say two verses? Huh? Yes, I like this question marks. You know? <laughs> That's like, you know, yes, ayatani. Yes. In, in the dual, is you're always, you can be certain. That's no exception I can think of. Okay. Uh, some exceptions are a little bit different that those are, uh, I don't want to explain here, which is sometimes you will see that Hamza will change it into wow. Uh, right now, I'm not going to explain, but most of the time, time it would be uh, this situation, okay? Now you see, it's extremely simple. Anytime you say, anytime you say, I uh, want to say two of anything, you cannot use the number. In English, you, you say two boys. In Arabic, you cannot use it. I mean, you can use it, I'll explain, uh, because you, I, I didn't teach you the numbers, that's another problem. How do you say one? Anybody know how to say one? Yes, wa. One is Wahedun. 
So how do you say two? Ethnani. See? You have ethnani. Even in the number two, you have the ani sound. So how even the two itself needs that ani sound. Because anything in Arabic that is dual, you have this ani. Simple as that. So if I say, for example, this is a maybe, you know, it's good something to keep in your mind. If I say waladun, let's say I say hada waladun. If I say hada waladun, this is a sentence, right? It means this is a boy. Do, do I have to say one boy here? Do I have to say one or everybody's clear? Everybody's clear, right? Everybody understand that there is only one boy. I don't have to say it one here. But sometimes in English, we can say that. We can say this is one boy. When we say one boy, what do you, what's the purpose? What, what are we saying here? Yes, it is for emphasis. To be more specific, yes. In Arabic, yes, if you can do that. Here, if you want to say one boy, you will bring the number as an adjective. So you will say, Hada waladun wahidun. So now you are saying this is one boy. You understand? But we don't have to do it unless we are trying to be a little bit uh, specific. We want to put some emphasis. Make sense, guys? This is clear? So this number will be what? Adjective. But if you want to say, well, for the other ones, I am just going to use the word. I'm not going to put on a sentence. And you'll see why, because I'll teach you how to put on a sentence. You will say what? Waladani. And if you want to say two boys, because here, honestly, guys, translation is two boys. There's no other ways you can say. Waladani is two boys. In English, you know, you cannot do anything else. You cannot put more emphasis because two boys are two boys. But in Arabic, when you say waladani, it is two boys. But if you want to be more specific and for some, honestly, here, this one would probably make more sense. But usually Arabic, they don't like to put a number after waladani because it is so unique. The ani sound is so unique. No one can like misunderstand. But if you really, really want, yes, you can say ethna, ethnani, ethnani. Waladani ethnani. This is like really, really redundant. So the point what I'm trying to make is that when you say waladani, it is very clear. Everybody knows we're talking about two. No problem. And, and you understand? So this, that we don't use, what I was trying to say, we don't use the number. In English, we use the number. In Arabic, we don't use the number. This ani sound makes everything clear like day and night. Now, so now you know the issue is, if you're paying attention, if you're paying attention, if you're my good student paying attention, you know something about grammar. Hmm. We only talked about this fata, dhamma, kasra. And we know if we say, if we say, waladun, you know, this is in the, the dhamma state, so to speak, meaning this would be either subject or predicate. So let's make it into subject. If we say, Subject, we say al waladu. Let's just say it's going to be al waladu uh, something. Okay. Sorry, this is the boy. How would we say the two boy? Hmm? It's the same rule. We just add alif and lam. And then we just say how we say two boys al waladani. Make sense? So al waladu is one the boy and al waladani is the two boy. See, we have to bring the two. In English, we have to bring the two, but in Arabic, this ani is making it clear. We're talking about two boys. Now, where is my dhamma? What happened to the dhamma? Because we know that when we put a something that is the default, let's just say default, or something that is subject. Whatever comes here, inshallah, we'll talk about this thing. I, it looks like I have enough time to wrap this chapter. But I need my Dhamma because that's what we've been learning. We have Fata, Dhamma, and Kasra. So it looks like when we say it has a Kasra all the time, in the beginning it has a Kasra. What's going on? Hmm. Now let's, let's look at another way. Now I know if I say I went to the boy, I will say Ila. And what happens here, guys? Please don't disappoint me. Please tell me what happens. I want to say, I went to the boy. What happens here? Kasra. So I say, ila, ilal waladi. 
okay, so how then how do I say I went to the two boys? Ilal, Wala, Dani? Hmm, what's going on here? How do we deal with these things? Here we have, we added additional Ani sound and here's a Kasra and here's a Kasra. How do we deal with the ending? How do we deal with the grammar? How do we indicate that this is a genitive or nominative or, or accusative? So this is something that inshallah, I will, uh, I will explain to you right now. So the way we do, the way we do uh, it, remember we have three states. We have a uh, nominative, we have accusative, and we have genitive. Yes, you guys already know this is nominative is Dhamma, we know, and the accusative is Fatha, okay? And, and the genitive is Kasra, which is Marfu, nominative, and Mansub is for accusative, and Majrur is for the genitive. Right now, I'm just focusing on explaining and the term is not that important right now main thing that you know we've been talking about this grammar that the ending has to be ending changes into three different states we have wala dun which is our nominative we have wala dan which is our accusative and we have wala din which is our genitive the kasra state but what we want to know is looks like when we add dual, we get into trouble. As soon as we add waladani, we already see something is happening. This fata dama kasra is not working. Yes, that is true. As soon as you add dual, your initial standard rule will not apply. The way we indicate the dual which is a nominative case, which is a quote unquote Dhamma state. And that's why you will see it from today. You will see why we cannot say that Dhamma, Fata and Kasra all the time. So that's why in the beginning, I did not care. Now I want you to feel for yourself why we have a problem. So that's why either you have to say nominative or you have to say Marfu. So this state, the default is Ani. That's how when you have the Ani sound, that's how you know that this is marfu. Now this is ready for being your subject or predicate. So then how do we indicate something is the accusative? What we do is we add, we add what? Instead of ani, we add ayini sound. Inshallah, we'll do a lot of ex uh, an example. Right now I'm teaching you the concept and then we'll go to the books and do more exercise. So that's how we indicate. So we have waladani and waladaini. Waladaini. That is your sound. So now when you have waladaini, that's when we know that this is an accusative case. Because as you can see, our wallet is there. So everybody knows that we're talking about a we are talking about boy. We're not talking about man. We're talking, you know, that the noun is there. And then by any sound, we know, well, now we're not talking about one boy, we're talking about two boys. And same thing here, Aini is also, we know as we, when we study that we know that Aini is also, we're talking about two boys. So the numbers is clear in both of them. Ani is two boys, Aini is also two boys. Waladaini, Waladani. For example, first let's get this one uh, cleared up. If I say Kitaba, kita baini, now you have to know because this is something that you're learning if I ask you how many books, forget about the context, how many books, what is your answer in terms of number? Huh? One book, two books, how many books? Two, exactly. So this is what you have to know. Anytime you see this kind of sound, in terms of number, you have to know we're talking about two. Kitabani, kitabaini, doesn't matter. Kalamani, kalamaini, okay, we're talking about two. So when you have these sounds, either ani or aini, we are talking about dual. And what's the difference? Ani we use for the nominative case and aini we use for the accusative case. Now I can say, now if I say, remember the example that we give, uh, we only use that for example, daraba wala daini. Now it's clear. We cannot say daraba. Can I say daraba wala dani? 
No, we cannot say daraba, daraba waladani. That means he had, he hit, the man hit two boys. You know, any two boys. Here, we cannot use that because this is your subject form. This is not your object form. We have to use the object form. Waladaini. You understand? So this is some, This is where you need a little bit uh, of understanding. But in terms of how do you make it, it's very simple. Even here, it's very simple. You just add ani and aini sound. Make sense? Now the question comes, well, great. So how do we make into a genitive case then? How do we say that I'm going to uh, to boys? Hmm. Guys, guys, guys. It is exactly the same thing. We also use aini. Your life is simple. You only have two states to memorize. Wala daini. It's exactly the same thing as the accusative case. So both accusative and genitive, they have the same form. Only the nominative is different. So nominative is ani and accusative and genitive is aini. So you say waladani, waladaini and waladaini. You understand? So I know what's in your mind, probably you already know. How do we know? How do we differentiate bet between the two? Again, the easiest answer would be that by the context, right? But there's another easy answer, which is like, <clears throat> if you know the genitive, it is very easy to understand the genitive case. Super easy to understand genitive case. Because I told you that in the whole Arabic language, we only have two times that we put kasra. We have the genitive. One of them is, is the prepagen. For example, so now if I say I came from two boys, whatever the context is, mean, wala, uh, wala, daini. So now if I ask you, is this state accusative or genitive? What would be your answer? Hmm? How do you know? Because they're both of the same. Accusative and genitive, they have the same form. So how do you know this is genitive? Yes, that's the simple. Because you see me, there's no confusion. Nobody will be confused. After I mean, you know, this is going to be the genitive case. Just like when you have idafa, then you know that the other one would be the genitive case. For example, I want to say the book of two boys, whatever, right? Kitabu, you know, any two boys. No, we can use definite. By the way, the def making it definite is not a big deal. You just add alif lam, but nothing is going to happen. You know, that's, you know, we don't have to, even that's easier because you don't have to think about in terms of like, you know, you have this tanwin, remove tanwin. No, that's nothing. It's very simple. Making definite is very simple. Just add alif lam. So you want to say uh, the book of the two boys. So you say al wala, al wala what? Al wala daini. So now, my question, is it genitive case or, or nominative case or accusative case? What case is this word? Hmm? Yes. Why is it genitive? Mudafila, yes. So see, this is also related to what I've been teaching you, which is the uh, last few weeks, which is the idafa and the genitive case. Because it is the second word of the idafa, we know this is genitive. So we're not confused. But now if you see something like that, Kataba. What is kataba? It's a verb. Anybody can guess? Hmm? Anybody can guess? So kataba means what? He wrote. Yes, he wrote. So now we have kita baini. So now you tell me, is this is genitive, accusative, nominative? What form is this right now? First of all, tell me what is kita baini means. Two books. Yes. So what is it? Is this nominative, accusative, or genitive case? It's accusative because many of way of looking at it. Number one, you can think that it is not genitive because sometimes, you know, finding accusative might be difficult. Here is very simple. You know, the verb and it's easy, but sometimes it, not, it might be like there's a lot of gap between the verbs and everything, but you can rule out the genitive case very easily. By how? If you don't see any preposition and if you don't see it's part of the second word. Okay. So this is the uh, only thing uh, you have to know. So is it clear? A lot of these things, you know, guys, uh, inshallah, we'll do a lot of more examples when you go to the book. But right now, you have to kind of know how these things are done. Because this grammar, guys, you don't know how important this grammar concept, is, like ending of the word, the grammar concept is in Arabic language, right? So inshallah, we will see the more we study and you will see the ending is, you know, it's getting a little bit complicated. 
We don't have the Fatah Dhamma Kasra anymore. Most of the world will be Fatah Dhamma and Kasra. But then now you start seeing it as different, uh, different form comes up, comes about, you know, there's some changes. It's not the default anymore. And our first case is the Muthanna, the dual. Okay. So the Ani is for Marfu or nominative case. And the Aini is for both accusative and genitive case. Very, very simple thing, right? If I want to say, uh, like going to, to mosque. So you're going to, to mosque. So remember, this is indefinite. We don't have any alif lam here. I, I can keep this one in front of you for now. So you understand. Here's your two main things. This Ani, Aini, and Aini. Fil masji daini. Yes. So here we'll use the Aini sound, not Ani sound. Because this is majrur. Because after preposition, so we'll say. Uh, two actually would be uh, ila. You don't say fi, it means in. Right? So we say ila. Masji, huh? Masji daini. This one should be really nice game, you know, whatever word you know, just random word, anything you can just uh, make some of them. Really, it's very simple. Just get it over with this sound and you're done. Because then you have to know other things. Well, how do we make an adjective then? How do we say too beautiful masji or too big masji? I know how to say one big masjid. How do you say one big masjid? We say masjidun, masjidun kabir. Yes. So we know how we've been doing this. A big mosque. Masjidun kabirun. Simple stuff. If I want to say the big mosque, well, I know what to do. I say al masjidu, then I have quickly have to make al kabiru also. Right? You understand? So this is something that we already know. But now I want to know how do we say two big mosques. So I know how to say two mosques. I say masjidani. Now I say kabirun. Let's analyze a few things before you answer. Number one, what we said here, you said it, it is indefinite. Remember our attributes is indefinite, right? And masculine. And what is the grammar here? So it is nominative case because Dhamma, right? Everybody's with me. And we also know, right now we know that this is singular. So you see, for the first time, we are extracting every single four, all of the four attributes of the noun. We started with indefinite, then we added masculine. Now, then we added the grammar. Now we have the full set. We look at one word, we extract all four attributes from it just by looking at it. Okay, so it, we know this is indefinite masculine. So, and what do we know about adjective? For the first time, you will see what adjective really means. It means it needs to copy all four of them. That's it, all four of them. So it has to be indefinite. It has to be masculine. It has to be in the nominative case. And it also has to be what? Singular. Is it following everything? Yes, Kabir is definitely following all of these things. That's how we build a adjective phrase. Hmm. Now let's uh, let uh, somebody can you can you give me all four of them? Okay, it's masculine. So I have one masculine. Is it? Uh, give me maybe you can give me one by one. I or D? Is I okay? Good. Is it is it genitive, accusative, or nominative? N A or G? And okay, good. How do you know? Because see, this is not easy. It's not easy. Something that you have to learn right now. This one was kind of easy because we've been hearing dhamma, 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 dhamma all the time. But right now, yes. Yeah, so this is something you have to pick. It's not easy unless you know it. You have to know that ani is your default, the dhamma state. You know, right now we're still saying dhamma state, which is your nominative case. So now tell me about the number dual. Yes. Okay. So if you know anything about adjective, we have to do copy everything in the adjective. So we have indefinite checked, masculine checked, genitive checked. See here is, sorry, uh, I mean, uh, nominative check. Here, see, see, even though they are two different, you're, we are using two different ways to indicate nominative. That's fine because we know this is nominative and we also know this is nominative. They might look different, but that's not the point. The point is that they are still nominative, yes. But we fall short in the number. One is dual and another one is singular. 
So the problem is it's not matching. So how do we match? Is it like subhanAllah something very big deal? We have to start another book lecture. No, it's extremely simple. We just make this kabir into a dual. In English, it doesn't make any sense. You know, how do you have big means two? Don't worry about English. We're learning Arabic. Just give what he wants. He wants to be, you know, he wants to copy everything. Just make him happy. Make this one into dual and you will be fine. So now, as you know that in adjective, we can make adjective in gender. You know, adjective has nothing to do with masculine and feminine, but we've been doing this all this time. Now we have to do adjective in numbers as well. So if we want to say adjective of the noun, then we have to add, we have to make it up dual also. So the answer would be what? Answer would be masjidani kabi, as sister pointer, kabi rani. Now we are saying two big mosques. Get it, guys? By Tani, Sari, Rani. Two small houses. Make sense? But then, how would you say, you want to say Ila? You'll go to two small houses, whatever. So, what do you do after Ila? Boom, everything has to change. So you say, by tiny. And do you live as a Sagirani? No, it has to copy the, uh, the grammar. So it will be Sagirani. That's the game. Okay, that's the game. So this is after that, you cannot say that anymore. Make sense, guys? And if you want to say the two small houses, well, that's not a big deal. I just add Alif Lam, and then I have to follow through with the adjective as well, Alif Lam. Make sense, guys? Maybe we haven't done any feminine. I'll just do one feminine example, and then two beautiful, beautiful girls. How would you say then? Yes, you're close. Good. At least you guys are picking that up. Yes, the ta one was missing. Yes, excellent. So even though so you have uh, been tani, although we don't see tamarbuta here, that's why I, I, I knew it can be a bit tricky. We don't have the tamarbuta, but it is what, that's why in the beginning, if, if you want to be 100% sure, you go, you put all the four attributes. So it's very simple, indefinite, and this is feminine, and then this is uh, your, you know, Ani is a nominative case and it is singular, right? So now it will be easy. We want to say Jamil, you know, you know what to, how to say beautiful Jamil, but can you say Jamil? You want to say Jamilani? Everything is fine, but then you will fall short with the feminine. So we have to add the ta. So we have to say Jamilatani. Make sense, guys? So this is, as you un understand, is something that we have to uh, read more, practice more, and inshallah, it will be easy. Now, only thing, uh, yeah, so I want to wrap up this one today, and then inshallah, if we can do some exercise next uh, next week, and then we have to talk about the plurals. Another thing that I want to say, instead of saying two beautiful girls, I want to say the two girls are beautiful. Trust me, it's extremely simple. Albintani, Jamilatani, excellent. So only difference between here and there is what? Is Alif Lam. As soon as you add the Alif Lam and don't change anything, boom, it becomes a sentence. Yes. Now what happens, this becomes D and this remains I, we have a sentence. You know, you, you can say, Waladun Sagirun. A small boy, and if you say al waladu sagiru, the boy is small, which is something we've studied them before. But now you see uh, the same goes with with the dual. The only thing now what we have to know that, which I don't think I mentioned it. Subject plus predicate. They agree with what? 
they agree with two things. What are the two things? Number one is, we know already, we've been doing this one, gender, and here is the new one, number. I think somebody mentioned it before, but of course we haven't dealt with the numbers, uh, so we, I didn't focus too much, now you know. So this is your, uh, this is your sentence. Subject and predicate, they must match with the gender and number. Do they match with the definiteness? Hmm? No, they don't match with the definiteness. If they did, they would become what? They would become an adjective phrase. They don't match with the definiteness. The subject is definite and predicate is indefinite. Okay, guys, good. So we, we, what we said is that in Arabic, the number, we have three categories, three types of number. We have a singular, just like any other language, and we have a dual, which exclusively talks about two, two of anything. And then we have a plural. So singulars, we, we know them, we've been working with them, we're very familiar with them, so we understand how it works. And the dual, we said, it is the way we make dual is by adding either ani, we add by ani, or we add aini. So what's the difference? Ani we use for the nominative case and aini we use for genitive and the accusative case.